morning. Invisible God, you have revealed yourself to us in Jesus Christ, sharing your own spirit in communion with our spirit. As we come to worship, disclose yourself more fully as we hear your written word and pray in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house as Simon and Andrew, with James and John. Now Simon's mother in law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they all they I mean they brought to him to all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and God cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to see because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very really dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed, and Simon and his companion hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighbor, neighboring? neighboring town, that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in the synagogues, had the demons. This is the word for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be, to to God. God. be to God. Will you please pray with me, friends? God of pillar and fire, you light our paths and guide us as we journey through this life. Prepare us, O Lord, for what is to come and sustain us as we go on our way. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, amen. My sermon title this morning is Preparing for the Journey. Over the past two Sundays, we have begun to dive into the Gospel of Mark. We read of Jesus calling the first disciples two sets of brothers, Simon and Andrew, and then James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Last week, we read of Jesus's first healing an exorcism of a man in the synagogue where Jesus was teaching that had an unclean spirit. This week, we continue the story. Immediately following their time in the synagogue, they retire to the house of Simon and Andrew, where we're told Simon's mother-in-law is sick in bed with a fever. Jesus heals her by taking her hand and lifting her up. This same means of healing is seen several times throughout the Gospel of Mark. Jesus reaches out, takes the hand of the person who is sick or possessed, lifts them up, and they are healed immediately. This feeling of immediacy runs throughout the entire Gospel of Mark. The author's writing style propels the reader forward, leaving one to wonder how exhausting these experiences must have been for the disciples, and for Jesus especially. This brings me to the verse I would like to focus on today, Mark 1, 35, which reads, In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. 
This is one of several times where Jesus goes away by himself and prays. And sometimes it reads as though this is a time of rest for him, a moment away from the clamoring cl crowds where he may find some peace and rejuvenate. One such example is found in Mark 6, 45 to 46. Immediately following the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus sends his disciples away to cross the Sea of Galilee while he stays behind finding a quiet spot on the mountain to pray. Jesus's exhaustion of this event of feeding the 5,000, which was really more like 20,000, was no doubt compounded by the grief of his, over his cousin, John the Baptist, who was murdered by the hands of Herod. Like many of us, it appears that Jesus needed that time away by himself to process, decompress, and rest. And sometimes though, these moments away from the crowds are meant to prepare. A prime example of this is found in Mark 14, 32 to 42. Though Peter, James, and John are nearby, Jesus secludes himself in the garden of Gethsemane, praying earnestly to God that the cup that awaits him, that of his passion, the betrayal, the interrogation, the beatings, the crucifixion, he is praying that this cup might pass from him. He's taking this time, that moment, to prepare himself for the journey ahead. So what do you do to prepare yourself for your journeys? As the young folks help me to demonstrate, might be a little, might be a lot. And though travel is limited now due to the pandemic, maybe think of a time where you have gone on a trip, like to Myrtle Beach or to Disney World. What steps did you take? You decide on your means of transport. So someone mentioned flying. If you're from the Midwest, like I am, that probably means a road trip. So you have to make sure you have everything you need, right? You have your suitcase packed, money in your pocket, medications you might need, maybe some snacks for the road, and a map to guide your way. You also wanna make sure that your vehicle is in good condition for such a journey. So fresh oil, properly inflated tires, and a tank full of gas to get you on your way. And finally, you need to know your destination. Perhaps the home of a family member or friend or a hotel for your stay. That's all pretty straightforward, right? What about a different kind of journey? A journey of awareness, growth, or healing. A journey of struggle, uncertainty, or acceptance. A journey of fear, faith, and follow through. How do you prepare for a spiritual journey? As in all things, as Christians, we look to Jesus, for example. He demonstrates a couple disciplines we may use as we go on our individual spiritual journey. He puts physical space between himself and that which might distract him. So in the scriptures I've mentioned today, he goes to a secluded place, to a mountain, and to a quiet spot in the garden, away from anyone or anything. So even though the pandemic has forced us to pause in some ways, it also put us in hyperdrive in other ways. So the events of this past year, for we're almost at the one year mark of the COVID pandemic, if you can believe it. 
these events have been so overwhelming. We are overwrought and exhausted. And while we are secluded in some sense of the word, we are at the same time inundated with information and pressure. So we must make the choice to disconnect from our devices from time to time in order to find that place of true seclusion in which we may focus on our spiritual health. Another discipline that Jesus utilizes often is that of prayer. Some people struggle to pray. Some find it hard to tune out distractions. Some find it challenging to quiet their minds. Some feel that they do not know how to pray. The good news is that there are many ways to pray. If you find it challenging to pray in a certain way, say, a traditional way, head bowed, eyes closed, then find another way. Perhaps a breath prayer is best for you. So a breath prayer is usually just one word or a short phrase. You take a deep breath in and you exhale with that word. So, for example, peace. Sort of a mantra in a way. Perhaps a contemplative prayer is best for you while taking a walk in nature. Or perhaps unspoken prayer that's expressed by artistic means like dance or painting. Find what works for you. And keep in mind that it might not always be the same type of prayer. It might change over time or based on circumstances. There are many spiritual disciplines that we may use to help us on our journeys, and it's important that we identify what works for us, as well as what is challenging to us. Personally, I struggle with silence. To me, that is one of the most challenging spiritual disciplines to practice. And on the surface, it's challenging because our world is filled with noise, noise, noise. But on a deeper level, it's challenging because in the silence, I'm forced to hear my thoughts. In the silence, I'm forced to confront my personal demons. In the silence, I'm forced to reconcile my struggles. Since it's the most challenging discipline to me, it is one that I need to practice regularly. So what do you find most challenging? Identifying, utilizing, and embracing that discipline or disciplines will lead to spiritual growth. What tools do you need to include to prepare you for your personal journey? Let us pray. Dear God, Help us to identify and utilize the disciplines that will help us on our journeys. We thank you for the example of your son, Jesus, and ask that your Holy Spirit guide us as we go along our way. Amen.